Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, my name is The Eclectic Witch. I post monthly videos about witchcraft, pick a pile tower readings and monthly readings for the star signs as well. And thank you so much for my returning subscribers, your engagement, your likes, your shares, everything is appreciated and it's really lovely to see that people are enjoying my content. So thank you so much. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about magic, the history of magic and what we perceive to be magic today and how magic works. So I'll be delving a little bit into a little bit of everything. So I think this is not going to just all fit in one video. This is such a large subject and it's like unraveling a ball of yarn that just keeps going and going and going. And realistically, we, we don't have all the answers because this is such a mysterious area when we talk about magic. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about the word magic. So we have magic with a C or magic with the CK. So that is thanks to Alistair Crowley. So he was an occultist, he was a mountaineer, he was an author, a poet. He was um, a very influential person in history when it comes to the occult and witchcraft as well. So he was a ceremonial magician as well. So he wanted to separate his stage magic from the magic he practiced out off stage. So supernatural, witchcraft, all that sort of stuff. So he wanted to do that, so he added a K on the end. And I think there's various reasons that he wanted to make it a six letter word as well. So that's also another reason he did that. But um, so really his influence um, over witchcraft and history is quite large. and. He's not the only one. There were so many other influential people as well, but he, he stood out because he was quite different. He was quite shocking with some of his practices. Um, I don't endorse anything that is dark um, at all. Just want to put that out there, but he is a fundamental important person in history. So I will touch on him a little bit throughout this video. And um, without him, like there's a big hole in history. Like if we were to just say, oh, pretend he didn't exist. Witchcraft and history, it, it, he, it does. It leaves a quite a big hole. So it's important to mention him and his influence. And a lot of rituals today in a lot of spiritual Wicca um, traditions were written by Aleister Crowley as well. So we can't just sort of cancel him out. Okay, so getting that out of the way, I will um, talk about um, magic and energy to start off with. Okay, so magic and energy. So when I think about energy, what do we think about with energy? So energy is is part of life. It's part of what makes us go every day. We need sleep, we need food, um, like plants, they're living things, they hold energy, animals hold energy. It's, it's essential for life. Energy is the flow of life. So if we think about things that hold energy, it must somehow contribute to us and magic as well. So if we think we can manipulate energy in such a way, this is this is what how spells work and how magic work works. It's the manipulation of energies. So going back to science just for a second, the first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It could only be changed or transferred from one form to the next. So we can't turn off or turn on energy, but we can tra transfer it from one thing to the next. So if we switch on a light on and off, we're not turning on or off energy. We are sending it from one place to the next. 
So this really comes back to magic and how energy works with magic. So um, how you perceive energy. So you will see lots of studies about um, energy bodies, that we have several bodies and that there's several planes of existence as well. Um, you'll think about mental energy, like for example, mental energy. When we're communicating or talking or we're reading something, that's our mental energy at work. Emotional energy, are we feeling happy, sad, angry? That's our emotional energy. Physically, are we hurt, are we sore, are we tired, do we need sleep? Physical energy. So this is just gets your mind thinking about energy and how it all, all sort of relates because it really does. And when we're putting our energy out into the world, there's a way to do it so we can attract what we want in our life. And this comes back to spell work. So spell work is the manipulation of energies. So Alistair Crowley states, uh, where does he state it? Um, okay, I found it. So magic is the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will. So he talks about will, um, conscious will and true will a lot in his, in his work, in his books and things. So um, conscious will is the, what we do every day. It's like, you know, we weren't, we're not really thinking through what we're doing and we're just sort of going with the flow and what is expected of us as opposed to true will, which is working from the heart. So he really believed that working with magic was able to um, work more in line with your true will and be able to manifest the life that you really, really want. So going back to energy and how this all relates to energy. So if we are able to use our intentions and use our will, work from our hearts and do this in such a way to attract what we want most in our lives. This is in line with magic and, and how we can really t tap into what is in the depths of our souls. Then that's what I really, really truly believe. So, so that's the start of, I suppose, talking about energy and how it relates to magic. So I believe for magical spells to truly work in our lives, we need to understand how we perceive energy, how we feel energy. So there's a little exercise you can do and you can look up online on different ways of um, perceiving energy in our daily lives. But a good one that I really like is rubbing your hands, rubbing, 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 rubbing until they warm up. And then you just move your hands in and out and you will start to feel them become buoyant when you're, it's almost like making a ball of energy in your hands and you'll start to feel it. Like I can really just feel it now that it feels like I've got a bouncy ball within my hands. That is energy. So that's the start of feeling energy in our atmosphere. So another, another way you can do it is just to get really in touch with yourself is if you walk into a room full of people, there might've been times when you go, I don't like the feeling of this place. I feel, I feel uneasy. So that's you, your intuition telling you the energy is, is not balanced um, with that within that atmosphere or the energy is a bit low. Um, if you're having a really engaging conversation or you're doing a course when, where everyone is feeling really inspired and they're really, really chatty and that, the energy of the room feels good, it feels light. So 
that's ways you could really get in touch with energy on an everyday basis because magic I believe is it happens all the time it's not just oh I'm gonna go off and do a spell no oh, I've done a bit of magic that's it magic I believe is part of our everyday lives we are we are constantly practicing magic so we can we can shape our reality to, to make it the way we really, really want it. I believe we can really do that. And that is through understanding energy and how we perceive energy on our every, in our everyday lives. So that's, that's another thing you can do. Just really get in touch with that. So now I'm going to be talking about how we start creating spells and all that sort of stuff and how we can enhance our daily life through witchcraft and spell work. Okay, so energy and spell work. So you probably would have heard that a lot of good spells come back to intention. So this comes in line with um, doing good or doing not good as well. So I want to touch a little bit on black magic as opposed to white magic as well. So um, anything that is causing harm to it, to something else is considered to be black magic or wishing harm on somebody else as well or another living thing. So um, in Wicca, you will see that there's the threefold law or belief that anything you put out there comes back to you times three. So um, you will see a lot of Wiccans that will not practice in anything that is dark or anything like that because it will come back to bite them on the bum later on, basically. Uh, so anything you put out there, so if you're putting out only good into the world, it's only going to come back to you and, I, and I come back to you times three. And I really, really do believe that, that it's only going to come back to you in more, more positive form. And I've seen it in a lot of my work in the past when I've really projected something really, really good out there, something brilliant comes back in return. But it does come back to intention. Intention is the start of it all. So if we have good intentions and we have intentions to help somebody else, you're going to see that times three. And I really do believe that. So every day, I'll give you some small examples. Every day we are creating spells. And you're probably, some of you are going, eh, what? Our thoughts, what we say, are spells constantly. What we attract with our words, our energy we put out, are spells every day. So saying words when we're actually doing a spell is just a, we're just adding some items to it. That's all. And we're projecting more energy and intention to it. That's the only difference that I really believe. So if we're getting up every day and we're saying, I hate my life, I hate my job, I hate my relationship, that spells. So you're putting out there, I don't like this, I don't like that, oh, why is, and then victim mode. Why does this happen to me? Why do bad things happen to me all the time? Bad things constantly happen to me all the time. So that is constantly being put out into the universe. So the universe doesn't respond in a way of, oh, I need to help you. Um, it's just reflecting back what you're putting out there. That's, that's when it comes back to intentions and our intentions of putting out negative vibes or negative things out there. But if we're, we're putting out there different words like, I'm really improving on my life. Like I'm really doing this. I'm really seeing the result in that. I'm seeing the results of my hard work. I'm seeing the positive. I'm seeing this. And you're only, if simple words to change that will make things grow in your life. So when it comes to spells, we, we think about what holds energy. So this is your energy you're putting out. But when it comes to spells, you're only adding to that energy. So, for example, I've got my little cauldron here. My little cauldron. So, putting some charcoal incense into this. Okay, I'm going to use my tongs and be safe because that's important, of course. Not that I, I always practice safe um, flame work. <laughs> now, where is my... Where is my... 
So, take two on that. So, for my spell work, if I want to add a different element of energy into it, I will burn some incense. So burning incense is a really good way of changing the energy in your atmosphere. So the ancients um, used a lot of myrrh, myrrh and frankincense in their rituals. So um, myrrh and frankincense are really good for calling in spirits and deities and um, as soon as you burn incense, you will notice the energy change in your space. I guarantee it. You will, the smell, the sense of that already changes your perception and you're getting into a, a witchy vibe. I like to say I put my witch's hat on when I'm doing spell work. So that's one thing that I'll do uh, for, for a spell. So holding the energy from the cauldron. So I've introduced an energy into my atmosphere and I'm manipulating the change. So remember that we're not creating energy here. We are changing the energy here. So if someone is throwing a whole lot of negative energy towards me, I just think, no, um, I, I can take that with me or I can reflect it back to them. So you, you are constantly choosing whether you're accepting certain energies into your life or you're, you're, you're just wanting to reflect the ones that is no good for you. So that's a constant difficult thing that, look, I'll agree that it's really, really hard to do, especially when people really want to throw bad intentions at you that and it really hurts you as well. But it's, you have to think, okay, why is this bothering me? Maybe what healing do I need here? And sometimes that's more about you than it is about the other person. So just throwing that one out there. Okay, so herbs, herbs in spell work, hold an energy. So this is rosemary that I grow in my garden. So rosemary is a really good herb for all round purposes. So great for cleansing, also great for attracting love. Um, it's a great herb for spell work because it works with a, a few different um, it's got a few different properties that it really, really helps enhance spells. So natural elements are really good for spell work because they hold a specific energy. And what I like to do first is I like to ask permission from the fairies before I take anything from the garden because I'm taking something from the environment for my benefit and I'm asking for permission. So there we go. So that the natural elements is really good for spell work. Candles lighting a candle this really helps with our intuition and the natural element of the flame is really good for burning as well different colored candles are really good for specific um for specific spells as well so um you might like a white candle for a bit of purification or cleansing um a pink candle to attract love into your life or more compassion into your life um they do, they hold different, everything holds a different energy. So if you're going to be introducing things into your spells, I do recommend natural elements, as natural as you can get. Sage, sage is really good. Cleansing, so they hold the properties of very, very much cleansing and purification as well. This one is was grown in my garden, as I just mentioned, I think sorry, um, and is great for cleansing before you do anything. So I do recommend to do that with your spell work is always cleanse first and you're, you're changing the energy in your space when you do that and you're removing, like pushing away anything that is not required in your space for your spell work. So this, I'm doing this all with intention, remember? so. If you're putting your intention and your will and your, your, your passion, I guess, as well into your spells, you're going to be only um, attracting a stronger response, I suppose. If I were just to burn a candle and say a few words, it, it might work and it might work for some stuff. But if, um, if I really want to attract something big into my life, I might put a bit more more focus and a bit more energy into it. So like every, every spell works differently. So 
Some people really like to work with the elements. Some people like to work with deities and gods and goddesses. And some people, um, they just might just work with, I don't know, something else completely. So it's really, it comes down to you at the end of the day, but you will know if something works or if something doesn't. Because you will feel after you do your spell, do I feel different? Do I feel a bit lighter or do I feel like it worked? You just know intuitively if something has worked or it hasn't worked. So I hope that makes sense when that comes to spell work is that natural elements I definitely recommend um, are going to be your best bet. In saying that though, say you've got something that's really special to you, like there's a um, there's a like a little plastic doll or something like that that you know a significant person gave to you in your life, and it means a lot to you. It's that's um, not to say you can't put that in or incorporate that into your spell work, because really it comes down to psychology a little bit as well when we are getting into the witchy mindset for spells. So I do recommend that if you're going to do a spell, if you're going to do a magical working, that you just really intuitively think about the items you are placing in your spells. So putting things in certain directions, like you're really calling on different energies from different um, directions, like north, south, east, west, having a think about the elements that are associated with it. This is all only going to help you and strengthen your spell work. And it helps you because really nowadays magic, like a lot of people practice magic or they're interested in Reiki. Like I um, became a, um, I did Reiki to a master level. So energy, I love working with energy and I love learning about energy because Reiki comes down to manipulating energies in our bodies and healing ourselves and our wounds. And magic falls in line with that. It all sort of interconnects when you think about study and research of, of magic and history that everything somehow interconnects. The chakras like that's huge when it comes to spell work as well, like working with our chakras, because essentially what it comes down to is why do we, why do we do, do magic? Why do we do it? Why in history did people do magic? So we look back at the oldest form of, well, arguably the most oldest form of magic, which is shamanism. So that is a, practice of altered states of consciousness in order to talk to deities in other spiritual realms in other spiritual realms and through this or deities or spirits or or whatever they were talking to they would either learn how to heal others they would um, learn important messages while they were in their trance like states they would um, bring back um, messages important that were important, like finding lost objects, for example, as well. So shamanism, you know, was huge on healing, like absolutely huge on healing. And that is why they practiced it all those years ago, because they either wanted to improve their lives or they wanted to help heal themselves or others. And why do we do magic today? It hasn't really changed that much. We want to improve our life somehow. We want to help others generally, or we want to be rid of something in our lives as well. So that's a, that dates back to history as well, being rid of something. When I say being rid of something, you can't remember, you can't destroy energy. So if you, if you really get that concept into your mind that we're all made up of energy and we're all interconnected, we cannot destroy somebody from our lives through magic. We can't, we can't <laughs> destroy them. <laughs> we can't be rid of them by like, just, you know, just um, absolutely um, destroying that energy that person is, you know, giving to us. We can push it back though. We can manipulate it so that we're making less room for that energy in our lives. So that's what I think comes fundamentally down to magic and why we practice it is because we want to attract better lives for ourselves. Um, we want to help heal ourselves and 
basically improve ourselves. So it really comes down to psychology, how we practice magic in our daily lives. And we are constantly, remember, we're constantly putting it out there into the universe, into the world with our thoughts, our emotions, our feelings. And really we are creating the lives that we are seeing for ourselves. And I truly believe that on a daily basis. And I truly believe we can help heal ourselves as well. So thank you so much for listening to this video today. I hope this has helped you guys and I hope it was interesting as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, by the way, and um, what you think about um, what I spoke about today. So thank you so much.